Hello everybody, welcome to the secret history living inside of your aquarium. Today, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at about five species of what you may think of as simple, uh, simple food for your fish. But we've got two species of mosquitoes in here, they're larvae anyways, and when you see the mosquito larvae, let's see if we can get it to focus in the sunlight without the shimmer too bad, We've got one type that's got legs and a big whale tail kind of shape, and the other one, they just stay small, and I've watched them through their entirety. So, uh, kind of interesting, just one is a striped mosquito that we have around here, and the other is uh, just a solid colored mosquito. I've seen them, slapped them enough that I happen to know what we have frequently in Seattle. So... Uh, I think there's more species than that, but those are the two real common ones. And the red guys that you are seeing, those are known as Daphnia. And that is their scientific name, is Daphnia, which makes it easy to remember, uh, because you've probably heard that name before. This is a cocktail of protein and vitamins essential for any fish that you're trying to breed. Uh, it's a great treat also. And uh, these Daphnia have been around for at least 200 million years, if not more. And it's very interesting to watch them reproduce because they can both produ reproduce with eggs, which they do towards the winter when they're not sure if there will be um, someone to fertilize the eggs. So they lay these eggs that have two genders already in them. Uh, basically, or the the genetic material to have a male or female egg, and then it is set off by something in the uh, genetics in the environment. Maybe it's hormones from oh, we got enough females in this puddle, and they decide one way or another to create male or female in the cooler temperatures. Now, in the warm temperatures, they reproduce the adults just uh, like you would normally think, and they produce in vast, reproduce in vast numbers. Uh, ba basically, daily, sometimes they can have one or two babies, or they can do these big broods. So it's kind of cool how they've evolved to have two or three methods of reproduction. And also, one thing of note, historically here, is how simple these still are, because they... To swallow, you see that main line in the body of the little red ones, they literally, they just position themselves over food, which is uh, algae, proteist, plankton, other bacteria, and they're little crustaceans, but they're very, very primitive crustaceans, and they basically, they convulse, conv uh, they, uh, they can flex by, um, basically squeezing their uh, little swimming uh, swimming swimmerettes and that allows them to swallow and contract and allow the food to go down through their system and out the other end and then uh, they move mostly with these little antennae in the front that are actually swimmer swimmerettes and feeling receptors they seem to be able to pick up light and dark and motion uh, it, with simple eyes and a simple nervous system, something comparable to, you know, a worm or, or something along those lines. Uh, but they moved with the sun throughout the day. They definitely like basking in the sun and in the shallow water with algae and cyanobacteria, which is what they like to eat. So I just wanted to show you up close, in case you ever were curious, what the heck we're talking about when we say Daphnia. The uh, wriggler here is the banded mosquito and then the, uh, let's see if we can find one that's not. So the straight ones that don't have the split tail and they just have little teeny legs coming out, uh, those ones are the other kind of mosquito that are a little smaller. Now it's of note that only the female mosquitoes bite you so uh, you don't need to worry about the males but let me just show you my little pawns hold on 
that's way out of focus. So here's the little ponds. Let's step out of the sunlight. So they get some morning sun, which helps algae grow. And I also threw in substrate from old tanks that had some algae. And what they seem to do is they all converge into a corner. Not all, but a lot of them conver converge into corners of the bins, which makes them really easy to harvest. Um, but be careful not to over harvest if you're using small containers like I am. I'm using these little four gallon or whatever they are totes. And the fish right here just get to eat pretty much uh, as I'm loading up a little cocktail to go feed my other fish inside. They get to eat whenever they want. So I just wanted to show you how simple it is to set up a Daphnia container. If you have green water, that's great. That's really what they want to eat. And if you can keep the water around 70 to 80 degrees that's ideal but that's not always easy to do a lot of times you can overheat them and up to about 105 degrees they just don't reproduce and higher than that I think they must die the literature just says they don't reproduce but I would assume they cook and then they also go into a dormant stage when they're really cold uh, they can they can die, but usually they will form sort of an eggshell type thing, uh, and depending on the species, and the bigger species will do that, whereas the smaller species will actually just lay a lot of eggs that are hardy and should make it through the winter, only to hatch when algae and sunlight and things like that warm them up and are present. So. Just wanted to share that little tidbit with you guys, and uh, there's a ton of vitamins and protein in in these little mixtures here. Let's zoom in a little more. See how, see how much they'll let us zoom in in this crazy age of cameras and cell phones. All right, so you can really kind of make out a lot of what's going on here, what they look like. They're kind of sea monkeys on steroids. Also, you'll probably see some seed shrimp of some sort. Another uh, more copepods and uh, uh, protease living in here, swimming around, and also things you can't see. Now, you want to be careful not to infect your your fish tank with some sort of bad bug, or uh, and not literal bug, I mean like parasite. Uh, so, uh, just be aware that that can happen and keep an eye out for it. Uh, but if you do best practices, Google online how to keep Daphnia, um, and then mosquitoes are just an added benefit. To me, uh, doesn't seem to attract more mosquitoes in my experience other than just to lay their eggs, but it, it's not the, the biggest deal in the world that there's more mosquitoes around. Um, it's not like, oh man, there's swarms of them. So it's real easy to do in a small space like this. You could even put it on racks like that. And uh, you can really produce enough food to feed your fish for the summer for free, easily. But I just wanted to kind of do a little update, show you guys this uh, method of feeding. Now, since they fly, uh, mosquitoes are not quite as old evolutionarily, but they're also very old. I mean, we know that they go back at least 120 million years, 150 million years possibly. Um, to the age of the dinosaurs, there's flying creatures. So, uh, emerging from the water and the, the six-step, or, or depending on who you ask, ten-step life, life cycle of eggs hatching, and their rafts are really cool. They have this, uh, mosquitoes, when they lay their eggs, they form these little black rafts, and the rafts are like little ovals, and they're completely water resistant. So they float on top of the water, and you can squirt water on them, and it just flies right off of it. It's very cool as far as uh, material technology goes um, for applications in the human realm, I would say. But, uh, you know, just little things like that always amaze me about nature. So I hope you like this little video into what I'm doing, how I keep my, uh, my Pseudomagills and my Danios and things ready for uh, their breeding and uh, reproduction and just keeping good colors these uh, daphnia as well as brine shrimp will have uh, well I just dropped that uh, will have beautiful uh, carotenoids in them uh, which 
cause that red and orange that you like to see in a lot of different species of fish and also that is a cue in so many fish specifically a lot of south american fish that they have had their uh, supplements they're uh, healthy they have vitamins so on and so forth uh, and that like in guppies and endlers they actually the females 10 to 1 will breed with a male with orange uh, spots from that carotenoid diet uh, and evolution uh, compared to one who does not have a an orange stripe or dot on them so kind of interesting stuff who thought so much information could be packed into such little critters but it's all connected up through the the food chain and the life cycle of that and uh, just thought I'd show you my little end of the food chain and this long evolutionary history so if you like what you heard if you'd like to go more in depth look under the microscope uh, watch some feedings do things like that um, I'm more than happy to keep showing you these things just as I have been since I started the channel that's the idea we learn you see what I'm up to and if you have questions I'll do a video on those things so uh, like subscribe if you liked it and if you want to know more subscribe and if you want to help out i'm out of work due to uh some health reasons for a while and uh this will be my only gig as i'm getting up in between resting most of the time and several surgeries so the channel is solely funded by patreon and super chats during live streams so uh, if you want to contribute to the channel, help me get a better camera or a uh, new fish of some rare sort, whatever it may be, uh, you can check out the links below to that. So, take care you guys. Take care of yourselves so you can take care of those around you and your critters who will all take care of you in turn. And, uh, of course, have a great morning afternoon or evening whatever it is where you are and uh, be sure to uh, keep your head up and swim on I'll talk to you guys later bye